electromagnetic induction. In this lab, we will be inducing currents and voltages in different things that we are measuring. In the first part of the lab, we have a hand coil here, which we will be using a small bar magnet to induce EMFs in. By moving the bar magnet in and out, north and south side, front and back of the magnet, we can work out the directions that we are inducing and the relative sizes of those inductions depending on how we're moving the magnet. To monitor that, we have two LEDs mounted in opposition at the top, such that one will light up with a positive current and one will light up with a negative current. And the whole apparatus is being watched by the voltage probe from Logger Pro, so we'll be able to see those relative size differences. When you are trying to move the magnet quickly, it is much more problematic trying to go in for all of the reasons of equipment hitting each other and us not wanting to break our own knuckles. So if you're trying to go for speed, you want to remove the magnet. It is much easier and faster to remove something quickly than trying to put it in quickly and then still stop soon enough that you don't hurt your hand. In the second part of the lab, we will be using a function generator to create a repeating electrical pattern. This electrical pattern gets put through our primary coil and then into the oscilloscope so we can observe it directly. Since we have a changing electrical signal in a coil, this is going to produce a changing magnetic field. This ring is then broadcasting that field out where it will be picked up by this secondary coil, or sensing coil, or receiving antenna. That changing magnetic field will induce a current in this smaller coil, which we will also be watching in the oscilloscope. So we can directly compare the broadcast signal versus the induced signal. When you are using the function generator, there are a couple things that you need to make sure you don't do. There are th there's a selection of modes. You never want any of those selected. You have your frequency multiplier, which sets it if you're going to be ones, tens, hundreds. It is possible to press one of these buttons enough that it unselects the one that's pressed, but not select a new one. So if you seem to have no signal, make sure that one of the frequency multipliers is in fact pressed. Your DC offset, you're going to want to turn it all the way down until it clicks in the off position, which leaves the two knobs on the outermost ends, your amplitude knob, which you're going to be changing in your experiment, and your frequency knob, which you will also be changing. Thank you for watching this video. Here's a fun fact. The verb to orient comes from the Roman practice of putting the east side of the map at the top. So your map would always aim at the orient, an archaic term for any lands east of Europe.